Leaders in Conversation with Noma Zibulo Changa. Hello, welcome to another episode of Leaders in Conversation. Today I've got this amazing um, leader who is Sean Madliwa. He is the Chief of Staff at, De at um, Deloitte Africa Operate, but he's going to share that journey with us. He is an executive um, leadership coach for about 10 years now, but we'll talk about that in detail. He's also a family man. So we'd like to welcome him to our leadership conversation. Welcome, Sean, and thank you for um, for gracing us with your presence. Thank you, Noma. I'm blessed to be here. Yes, yes. We're, to we're actually talking about that blessing, mm. and um, you mentioned that you've got five kids. You're a family man. So just talk me through your family structure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, family is really at the heart of everything I am. I'm married for 16 years to a beautiful Posa wife. We share five beautiful children. Oh, lovely. Four of them are, are girls. What a blessing. Yeah, twins, uh, the firstborn, uh, two more girls after after the twins and uh, the last born is a boy oh and it's a boy that you've been longing for i tell you <laughs> <laughs> and god bless you just at the end at the end uh, did you always wanted a big family yes that was a deliberate plan my wife and i wanted a big family and we wanted a family at a young age so that they can grow with us yeah and, and i think we've together. and grow together with them and what's the age gaps uh, twins are 16 m4c is 14 10 and 2. Oh, lovely, yeah. lovely. So it's quite a nice spread. But this last one is a challenge, you know, eight years, eight years gap. Okay. Uh, getting back into, you know, the nappy run, <laughs> the late nights, the teething yes. was a challenge. Thing, yes. But uh, we, we love it. We You're love it. embracing it. Absolutely. But that speaks to your leadership. Um, how important is leadership to you? I think leadership is, 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 is at the heart of, of everything. Um, it epitomizes how we show up. Yeah. Leadership for me really translates into the ability to use data and information mm. to make an informed decision yeah. for the betterment of your organization, yeah. your community, or even your family. Yeah. So all of us practice leadership in some shape or form. Yeah. Um, and, and, and really, it, it, it's at the heart of what we are. Or who we are part of what we are so you you reckon that if we don't place our heart into everything that we do that can't be leadership right it, it can't be because then you're not your authentic self yes right when you show up as as your authentic self you represent a, a brand of leadership yes and yes. and that should be the essence of who we are yes i love that you represent a brand of leadership that's right and it's a leadership that we are requiring today and tomorrow absolutely i think both as a, as, as a continent and as a country, you know, leadership is really something that we die for. Yeah. Decisive, strong, bold leadership. Yeah. Authentic. Authentic leadership is something we desire. Definitely. Um, you've enjoyed quite an interesting career journey. Mm. Take us through this. Oh, I've had such a, an eclectic career. Um, and, and maybe just a, as, as, a, as, a, as a preface to that, I've sort of perceived my career as a learning journey. Yeah. Um, I've not been in, in one organization for longer than three and a half years. Yes. And that was a deliberate move. Yeah. I've looked at my career as a project. Yeah. I step into an organization. I deliver on a project. Once I excel, I move on to the next. I love that strategy. Um, I've I started off in retail banking mm -hmm. with EBSA. Uh, joined SA Breweries, mm. which was great grooming. Um, for anyone who wants to work in FMCG, will tell you SAB had a, has a great grooming program. Um, transcended into BAT, uh, more Tennessee. Mm. So I've had a really, you know, colorful uh, uh, FMCG journey. Yeah. But as that journey matured, I sort of started finding who I want to be yeah. within the corporate space, mm. and I really enjoy developing talent, managing mm. people, mm. Um, and organizational change. Organization. Is that how you've landed um, the chief of staff role? Absolutely. At Deloitte? Absolutely. Talk so, me through that. What does that role entail? As the chief of staff to the Deloitte Africa Operate Leader, mm. my role is to, is to be her deputy mm. um, to support the strategy implementation of Deloitte, uh, of Deloitte Operate. Mm. And that, that strategy is all about really bringing in the final leg of what Deloitte calls their multidisciplinary model. Yeah. Um, 
the business is shaped as such, there's advice. Yeah. So a client will come to us and ask for advice on a challenge that they're, that they're posing and we'll give them advice. The second arm is implement, mm -hmm. where the client says, well, thank you for the advice. Can you help me implement that solution? Mm. The third leg, which is where I fit in, is, is around operate. Yeah. So now we've given a client advice, we've helped them implement the solution, and then they ask us to run it for them, to operate that solution it. Operationalize for them. it as well. Correct. Yeah. So this has really grown, especially in the past uh, two and a half years. Yeah. You know, brought on by the pandemic, where companies are looking to automate mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of systems mm -hmm. and processes, and that's where the operate the run part of the business mm -hmm. has, has has started to grow. Mm -hmm. And we, myself, and the operate leader, we are spearheading that in Africa. We launched in July last year, and we are standing up operate. Mm -hmm. You're doing amazing. Thank you. Yes. Tell me, what has um, the artificial intelligence and the and the world of work um, has shaped the way leaders think today, and um, how should leaders be thinking tomorrow? That's one of the greatest challenges leaders are facing in the corporate space, Norma. You know, innovation, AI, yeah. uh, all the, you know, the, the, the rate of change, mm. if I can call it that, the rate of change is one of the key challenges that leaders are facing. And that rate of change is, is, is largely influenced by both micro and macro influences. Mm. So, so, so the pandemic was a big influence. Yeah. That changed us from going to work every day, Monday to Friday, to a, a hybrid work, a, a, a virtual work opportunity. And leaders had to adjust policies, leaders had to adjust their, their traditional ways of working in order to accommodate that new that, that that new influence um the challenge continues because innovation doesn't stop yeah. we've got chat gbt that has come into the yes. fold now it's challenging the schooling system it's challenging writers it's challenging a lot of industry norms mm. and leaders need to perpetually and constantly adapt to those changes for an effective leader in the in in in, in the 21st century corporate space in particular yeah you need to be an agile Agile. An agile leader who can adapt to change and who can use data and information to make informed decisions to lead his or her organization into the right space. And for the betterment of the, the, of the organization. Absolutely. Right. You've started internal auditing, mm. right? We're speaking about it offline, that uh, we actually um, have seen each other. Yes. We just not have engaged <laughs> with each other um, at the Nelson Mandela. We're in University. the same campus, yeah. We're in the same campus. You know, I'm studying HR, you're studying internal auditing. That's right. How did you find yourself from internal auditing to organizational change? Chains, transformation leadership coach, chief of staff, strategy, <laughs> and you also did marketing. What was that all about? It, it's such a colorful um, career journey. So I think it, it came about as a gap, right? There was a gap, um, and that gap is called vocational guidance. Yeah. I recall back in the day, there, there, there used to be deliberate vocational guidance yeah. classes to guide us in terms of what career choices to make. Um, I didn't have as many of those. Yes. So I went into the workspace based on my own in intuition, right? Mm -hmm. And I wanted to understand money. So my, my passion around, or my influence around studying auditing was to understand money. Yeah. How money works, how money is made, and how to work with money. Yeah. Um, but soon after, you know, I realized that this is not what I want to do. Yeah. I do not want to be counting money all my life. <laughs> no, it's, it's like, you know, you can't have a change agent and versus money. Correct. Person. There's two distinct, differently um, um, uh, professions. Correct. Mm. But what, what, what happened was that um, that background has, has really aided my career, mm. right? Because I've got that financial acumen yes. that enables me to be able to speak a business language and, and understand. And to interpret the data that you're talking about. And to interpret data yes. and make those informed decisions. So I, 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 I don't negate the, 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 the tertiary education. I think it's, it's been my backbone. Although I'm not an auditor, I understand audit principles. And I think I then fit well into Deloitte because I understand the language, I understand the culture quite well. Um, the change in, the change in, 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 in career choice yeah. really came about when I started pursuing my passion. Mm. So, you know, studying auditing was all about a vocational uh, uh, opportunity, but I think what I'm doing now is really around my passion. Your passion. What are you passionate about? Talent development and organizational change. Mm. Um, I love to see people grow. Mm. I love to be part of that journey. Yeah. There's nothing more rewarding than see, seeing an individual develop into their, and blossom into their, into their true self. You know, really yeah. unearth that potential and, and and deliver, you know, and, and achieve the milestones and, and, and goals that they want to achieve. Mm. So that's the talent development part of it. The other side is the organizational change. Yeah. You know, as, 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 as a country that is a, called an emerging economy, mm. we are growing, constantly growing, constantly developing, and being part of that journey to help organizations really transform 
and really you know become robust and 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 productive and profitable organizations is something i enjoy yeah so so that that space is is really where i see myself playing mm. now and into the future now and into the future so you've been involved in quite a number of leadership roles at the time you were at the nelson mandela university mm. such as um you were the src um uh, the treasurer and you were the founder and chairman of the creative arts society mm. i mean you were studying internal auditing <laughs> you're currently sitting as a change agent and transformational leader and um at, the, at some point you were the founder and chairman of the uh, creative arts Talk me through that. It's that balance, right? I keep talking about the, the the mind. The mind is telling you, and once this, and the heart is yearning for that. Yeah. So, 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 you know, my acumen and my studies, you know, led me to pursue a, a mini political career at school. Um, I got involved in student politics, and mind you, back then, student politics were very active yes. and very vocal yes. Yes. and very instrumental in shaping in shaping our, our, our country. But also advocating for the positive and for advocating for change, yes. right? Um, and and I landed a role of becoming the SRC treasurer at Port Elizabeth Technicon at the money, time. Money, money. <laughs> <laughs> it was a challenging role. A uh, big part of the role was really trying to, you know, fight for students yeah. to, to get access into, into tertiary education. Mm. So the, the big part of the treasurer's role uh, back at varsity level was to fight for students who can't afford to study and, and to get them NSFS loans and, and help them through the process. Uh, awareness was a, big, uh, was a big gap back then. You know, there was not enough awareness around uh, government support to be able to study mm. um, and we drove a lot of that awareness to make people aware that there is funding available you can use NSFAS in other means and bursaries and scholarships in order to be able to study so that was a very exciting role um, the other side of that was that it was my creative being that wanted to, to come out at, 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 at varsity there was no creative society that embodied everybody from drama and poetry and dance and all of that so when we formed uh, you know the the, the, the creative art society it was about bringing all those artists together and uh, we put on a concert each year while we're at varsity to showcase all the multiple talents that that, that were on the campus um, we gave them a platform we gave them a stage in order to showcase their, their skills and talents skills, yes that 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 must be a um, you know a a really true leadership role that you've taken there. Um, you founding something, for instance, that you, number one, you were not studying, mm. you're not part of the creative arts, um, you know, um, department, etc. but you decided to bring all those, it, it takes leadership for me. Absolutely. Um, would you say that um, leadership is, is, is born or one can learn leadership skills? <laughs> it's, it's always a- Are you born a leader or it, are it, you? It's, it's always a challenging question because there are traits of, of leaders who are born leaders. Mm. Um, Such and, as? Well, I suppose I'll, I'll use myself as an yes. example. So I'm the first of six kids. Mm. So, you know, by nature then, you know, I've always been a leader. Yes. I've assumed yes. that leadership role. Yes. I've assumed deputy that parent. deputy parent role. Yes. Um, so, so organically, leadership has always been in my ambit. I've always needed to steer and, and I've always needed to be a trailblazer, yes. show the path, you know, guide my, 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 my siblings. My, my siblings. Um, so generally leadership, I was born into a leadership function, mm. right? If I can call it that. But the skill of being a leader is something I've had to hone mm. over the years. Over the years. So yes. you may be born into a leadership construct, but the skill of being an effective leader is something you need to develop. What are those skills? Let's talk about those skills. <laughs> what are the critical leadership skills that our leaders need for today and for tomorrow? Oh, there's a few, but I think if I could maybe zone in on just three of them. Yeah. I think the first one is, is, is the ability to listen. Yeah. I firmly believe that a lot of our leaders do not listen to their people, whether it's at a government level or a, 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 a corporate level. I think listening is, a, is, is, a, is, is, is really critical, understanding the needs of your people. So, so, so with listening, you know, it, it talks about communication. And the reason I've chosen the word listening is because if you say communication, people think talking. It's broad. Yeah, yeah. and it's too broad. But I really want to hone in and say the skill that is, effect, that is required to be an effective leader is to be able to listen and really unpack the message that that individual is sharing with you, unpacking the need, unpacking the true, you know, message they're trying to share with you. So I think listening is, is, is a critical skill that leaders need to have, especially in the 21st and century. I agree with you. you know, so that forms part of a, a communication package. The second one I think is, is, is understanding change. Yeah. Being a change manager, being a change agent, being a change champion. Yeah. As a leader, you need to be agile. You need to understand that your environment is constantly changing. Your, 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 your people are constantly changing, right? Every Everything is growing, everything is constantly moving and as a leader you need to then stay ahead of the curve 
and anticipate some of the challenges that, that your organization will face. Yes. And change, understanding the nature of change, the, you know, the, the processes of change is, 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 is a critical skill. Mm, mm. The last one, and, and, and I think it's probably the most important one, is the ability to decide. Yeah, decisive. To, make, to, be, to, to be decisive, to use information, to use data, to make informed decision for the betterment of your people, your organization, your country or your community. Right, I think that is a critical skill that leaders need to have. If a leader is undecisive, it, it, it leads the flock away. Yes. Right, you need a, a shepherd who knows where to go, who will lead us accordingly and make decisions on the spot yeah. that will serve that will that will serve the flock. The interest of the people. The interest of the people. Mm -hmm. So I think those for me, you know, man, they they soft skills, right? But they are critical There's skills. A lot of them, but I, I think you've touched on on, on three um, key critical skills um, that are needed for the leaders today and tomorrow. Um, I mean, when you talk about um, you know decisiveness we need we need um, you know leaders that um, you know have the backbone that's right leaders that are authentic leaders that even their employees or their people can trust and um, leaders that advocate for the right things and and, and leaders that um, are also you know uh, pushing the agendas of the people that they're leading first absolutely pushing their own agenda absolutely and we're not finding a lot of that in South Africa right um, not right in now or in government not right um, now it's, 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 it's a bit of a shaky and and I think um, that's where um, as we were speaking of Line, that's that's one of the things me and you have in common you know is is to try and drive this leadership so that we don't have these broken records in the future and we can lead even the people that are coming after us to understand what does leadership mean and Absolutely. what are the things that can you know drive um there tomorrow i couldn't agree more no matter the key that can unlock the true potential of africans is leadership leadership from like you've mentioned from a government perspective you know i think we 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 need to transform the mindset of our people mm. and 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 it's leadership that will will be the instrument that can drive that mindset change yeah. right we've got a a, a a very aged leadership in government across yeah. all the countries in africa yeah. we need to start seeing you know young leaders being incorporated into government young leaders being brought into the fold young leaders being involved in the decision making of the countries um, and i'll bring it back home similarly in our cabinet you know 70 yes. percent of our cabinet is above 50 above 60 even mm. you know and and we we need we need to involve youth we need to involve young people who bring the innovation do who bring the heart want to be involved absolutely absolutely there, 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 there is a definite there's a definite uh, desire from young people to be involved i think that there's a lack of platforms um, that recognize youth leadership like i said to you back in our days we were involved in student politics yes. and it was very active i don't see a lot of that anymore i don't see a lot of youth organizations being active being vocal uh, uh, as much as they used to be yeah. Every now and then you'll see a spike because of a yes. particular issue, you know, like, like, like the varsities had a, yes. had a bit of a run recently around the fees and admission issues. But what we need is to see a constant drive from youth to be involved in decision making, decision making for our country, because ultimately we are, we are preparing our tomorrow. Yes. So we need to be involved in the decisions that dictate and will shape how, our, we, want tomorrow. how we want to show up tomorrow. Yes. Absolutely. So, so I, I really think that you know, youth leadership, developing more young people to get involved in, 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 the, in, the, in the relevant structures to empower you know, uh, and, and inform the decisions that will shape our future mm -hmm. is something we need as, 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 as a country. And even in organizations, we're seeing a big drive around women empowerment, youth empowerment, and, and that empowerment is about involvement. It's about mm -hmm. getting women and, 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 and the youth involved at board levels, at executive levels, at senior manager levels, where decisions are made. But creating the conducive environment for them to thrive. That's critical. Spaces. That's critical. Yes. Because, I mean, we can have that, but if we don't have the right environment for those young leaders to thrive in those environments, then it defeats the whole purpose and the whole big picture, right? So I'm a farm boy, so like my grandfather would say, a good seed needs good soil. Yeah. The environment exactly. needs to be conducive in order to enable us to, to deliver on, 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 on the mandate. that leadership mandate. Yes, definitely. Um, um, as we are having an interesting leadership conversation with Sean uh, Maziwa, who is a um, chief of staff at, at um, Deloitte Africa Operate, we are going to an ad break and we'll be back soon. And thank you for listening. See you on the other side.
If you're about to get married, then it's crucial that you hear what I'm about to say. Your wedding day shouldn't just be an event. It's the day when the story of your love journey is shared among family and friends. And trust me, you need this to be captured beautifully because let's face it, your uncle's dance moves might not be as impressive the second time around. And to capture those precious moments, videography and photography are the most essential components of your wedding day. Now, let me be honest with you. I know firsthand that videography and photography services can be often quite pricey. But fear not, because as the founder of villages I am here to change that I believe that capturing your love story should be affordable and accessible to everyone that's why I personally offer wedding packages with flexible monthly payment plans tailored to fit your budget without compromising on the quality you deserve but what truly sets villages apart is our passion for storytelling I don't just press the record button I immerse myself in your love story discovering the emotions the connections the love that makes your love story unique. Imagine reliving the tears of joy, the laughter, the heartfelt moments every time you watch your wedding video. That's the personal touch I bring to every project. So if you're ready to embark on this unforgettable journey and to create a love story that will be cherished for a lifetime, look no further. As the founder of Villagens, I am committed to making your wedding day an everlasting celebration of your unique love story. Let's connect on a personal level as I capture the essence of your love, the moments that truly matter. So together, let's make your wedding day an unforgettable experience. To get started, reach out to me directly. You can email me or send me a WhatsApp text. We at Villagens are looking forward to being part of your love story. Remember, at Villagens, your dream wedding is within reach. Welcome back to our leadership conversation with Sean Madliwa. He is the Chief of Staff at um, Deloitte Africa Operate as we were uh, continuing with our leadership mm. conversation. So you went to study organizational leadership development and executive coaching between 2013 and 2015. What interested you to study leadership development and coaching? I'd been in corporate for about 10 years at the time and um, had been through a couple of roles, seen a couple of things. And I started to find myself, I started to enjoy mm. certain things and really people development, talking to people, growing people, coaching people. That space started to interest me more. Yeah. But I didn't want to take your path and go full on into HR. Mm. I, I really just liked the, the specialized, the specialized mm. space around talent development. Yeah. Um, and, and that really was, was, was the, the, the nudge to say, look, let me go in and learn more and understand this industry better and understand that space a bit better. And, and it's, it's, it's really been a passion of mine that I continue to pursue it till mm, today. Yeah. Um, so this month you celebrate 10 years as a yes. transformational leadership coach. Um, what does this entail and how important is transformational leadership? So firstly, thank you. It's a, it's a, it's a big milestone. I think uh, a decade in coaching has, has really been an exciting journey. And I'm grateful to have, to have had this journey. The lives I've, had, I've, I've been able to touch. Mm. Um, you know, I, I did a tally the other day um, as I was heading into the month of May. Uh, over the past 10 years, you know, I've, yeah. I've coached at least one person each month. Wow. Um, wow. So, uh, That's huge. Eh? I know of 127 people off the top of my, of my mind that I've coached. Wow. That's excluding groups and corporates. Wow. You know, that's, so that's, that's amazing. Really and congratulations. A, thank you very much. It's really yeah. been a privilege, you know, to, to, to be part of people's journeys, influence their lives and, and really help them transform themselves to become their better selves. Mm. And that's what it means to me. Yeah. You know, to be a transformational coach is to help people to unlock their true potential. Mm. That, unlock that, their true that, potential. That, that, that's it. Mm. That's it. You know, I mean, what coaches do is really to uh, enable people through tools and techniques in order for them to become their best version of themselves. Yeah. And, and I've been privileged to have seen and witnessed those journeys and to be part of, 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 of some of those journeys has been... And, and, and those um, life-changing moments. Life-changing moments. You know, I still have people who I coached five, six, ten years ago who will WhatsApp me and say, remember we did a goal-setting session? Yeah. I've achieved it now. Here's wow. my picture. I've graduated. I've started my business. I've got a, you know, so it's always beautiful. And that's fulfilling. Absolutely. You yeah. know, money can't, money can't, 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 buy, that. can't buy that. You no. know, to see someone else develop and grow and to become their true self and their authentic mm. self and the best version 
of themselves is priceless. And, and, and I guess transformational leadership also talks to um, um, selflessness, mm. right? You, because you're giving off yourself, you're giving off your time, you're giving off your resources and, and, on, and of your knowledge as well. So it really talks to true leadership. Absolutely. Uh, and to echo that, uh, uh, transformational leadership is really about understanding that leadership requires agility, leadership yes. requires change. Mm. There is no one leadership style that is perfect. One size fits all. There is yes. no one size fits all. You know, you, you need to be the leader that is called upon on that day for that moment, for that situation. Mm. So as a leader, when, when we talk about transformation leadership, it's about a leader who embodies and has the skills to transform themselves to be what the situation needs. Yeah. Right? Sometimes, and I'll talk about leadership at home, We've got, we've, got, we've, got, we've got a big family. Sometimes you need to be a stern parent, really put the, you know, lay the law, you know, bedtime is bedtime. Yes. But sometimes you, you, you need a different type of leadership. You know, you need to be and encouraging. Different and different child requires and, different correct, leadership. Correct, yeah. correct. So sometimes you need to be an encouraging parent, yeah. you know, and that's a different type of leadership. Yeah. So motivation, encouraging, yeah. inspiring, you know, so we are constantly, you know, in a leadership space, but using a different technique and different mm, style and approaches and, a different approach. and depending on the environment that you want to, um, to you create, know, to, to create. Yes. Correct. So right. what, that's what we do. That's what I do as a, as a transformational coach mm. is to enable individuals, enable organizations to understand the principles of leadership and how to, 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 to leverage and use those levers accordingly in order to achieve the desired results. It's like playing chess, right? Absolutely. Each, yes. each piece is important. Each piece is important. Each piece is important. It's a moving particle but towards the same goal. Absolutely. Right? Yes. So what challenges have you encountered in corporate while climbing the corporate ladder? <laughs> <laughs> Many. Um, I'll, I'll start off maybe just with... For more from Leaders in Conversation with Noma Zibulo Changa, you can continue listening to the rest of this episode on your audio streaming service app. Our podcast is available on various audio streaming platforms. Details in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.